Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of Adam Talks, a podcast that takes an alternative look at retirement. This is Adam Bergman, founder and CEO of IRA Financial. If you want to learn more, you can subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on social media. Just search IRA Financial. Hey everyone and welcome to another episode of Adam Talks. I'm Adam Bergman, tax attorney and founder of IRA Financial. And on today's episode, I'm going to give you my personal stories, 9-11, 20 years later. Can't believe it. Can't believe it's been 20 years. Never, ever, ever will forget that Tuesday morning, the rest of my life. And um, so I just thought I'd spend some time kind of going through my story, uh, my girlfriend's story at the time, and uh, my experience during that crazy day and some, some silver lining, I, I guess you can say, some lessons from that day and maybe some lessons that we should remember 20 years later. Um, so I, where should I start? I guess I started work at White & Case, which is you know, a large law firm in New York City, a couple weeks before. And it was a Tuesday morning. I was first two weeks at work, so I was getting into the office 8 a.m., which is really early for lawyers. Most lawyers don't get to the office before 9, 9.30. But I wanted to make a really good impression in my first month at work. So I was getting into the office really early. And I never will forget, uh, I was living uh, between 1st and 2nd on 52nd Street. And I remember leaving my apartment and just looking up and the sky was so bright blue, brilliant blue, dazzling blue. I, I remember still to this day saying, wow, what a gorgeous day. I wish I'd be at the beach. God, I, why am I going to work? How, how dumb am I? Uh, being a lawyer. It, what a beautiful day. So I remember uh, till this day, every time I see a bright blue sky, I always think of that morning saying, wow, that's 9-11. That's a 9-11 sky. So I got to my office around, I don't know, 8.30 or so. And um, there was no one there. It's like me and, and one other person on the floor. And I was checking New York Post, Wall Street Journal, you know, ESPN, my usuals. And I remember seeing a flash in New York Post Small airplane hits World Trade. So at that point, I was working on 45th and 6th Avenue, and I was actually facing east. So I was facing um, the East River. It's on 34th floor. And uh, I was like, oh, no. I said, let me look because the corner office faces south, which can see the World Trade Center. So I remember running into his partner's office, and I see smoke. I don't see flames yet. I see smoke from the World Trade. And right away, I'm like, whoa, um, what's going on? So my sister, who worked at, the, at JP Morgan at the time, I call her up. I said, have you seen what I'm seeing? She goes, no, I, I'm on the internet. It's really slow. I'm not sure what's going on. I think it's a small plane. Everyone's reporting a small plane hit. Um, so it's like, okay. Um, but I see it. I see the smoke. Uh, I don't know if it's a small or large plane, uh, but it's a plane. Something hit it, a helicopter. Um, and that was it. And then obviously the second plane hits and I see, start seeing flames. And then at that point it's 9 AM people are coming into the office. People are freaking out. People, there's about a hundred people in this partner's office staring at the world trade. Uh, and I said, you know what? I'm going to go to Times Square. There's big screen TVs. This is 2001. I mean, the internet was dead at that point. The the, the connections were horrible. You barely could call anyone because everyone was using their cell phones. It's not the same wireless as today. Um, the websites weren't updating. No one really knew what was going on. So I said, hey, I, I'm going to go to Times Square. Let's see what's going on. And Times Square was a couple blocks away. I, I ran over there with some, with actually a colleague of mine. And uh, you see people congregating in the middle of the street, staring at the, the big screens, staring at the World Trade on fire. And I remember just seeing people around me start crying. And uh, at that point, I think we knew that something horrible was happening. So I remember running back to the office, didn't know what to do, right? I went up back up to the 34th floor. Um, no one knew, is this an attack? Uh, it was just random plane crashing into the World Trade. Although when the second plane hit, I think we all knew this was something worse than just a random accident. And then obviously we heard about um, the third plane hitting the Pentagon, uh, and then ultimately the fourth plane, which they were trying to scramble and, and find out where that was going. And we know that was targeting the White House. So at that point, uh, we knew we were in trouble. Girl I was dating at the time worked on the floor of the New York Stock Exchange. 
So I, I couldn't reach out to her either because um, the phones were dead. They were just down. You could not get anyone on the phone. Um, so at that point, uh, no one knew what to do. We all decided to leave the building. Um, and we, were in, we were in Midtown. So you just saw people walking in the middle of the street, right? Everyone was just walking, trying to get information from people. It wasn't pandemonia. People weren't running. It wasn't like it was, um, you know, down near the World Trade, you know, below Canal when everyone was just running north. Uh, people were calm, but people were walking. Everyone was basically saying, you know what? I'm not taking public transportation. I'm not taking a subway. I'm not taking a train and I'm going to walk. And everyone just started walking to wherever they lived, <laughs> whether it was New Jersey, Long Island, Westchester. Uh, I lived in the city, so I, I kind of just was, you know, walking east. And uh, ultimately, you know, obviously we heard what was going on. I ended up talking to you know my girlfriend who was covered in just smoke her whole uh, uniform because on the New York Stock Exchange on the floor you have all these uh, you know you have a certain jacket you got to wear and it was all just smoke infested um, and um, her hair was all um, you know full of smoke it was, it was crazy it was like a, a zombie um, and obviously at that point we all knew what was going on uh, it was it was super scary and then um, basically that night um, kind of stayed up all night watching the news at a roommate and we were just obviously totally freaked out my parents at the time lived in canada so i couldn't you know, really um you know see them obviously we were communicating phones were back up at that point but no one had any, really any information no one knew what was going to happen are we safe everyone was scared so the next morning i woke up and i decided to go to work because i didn't know what to do so i literally got up at like 6 a.m i went and started walking in midtown and there was no one on the streets. It was empty, 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 empty. There was literally no one. There weren't even people selling newspapers. I mean, it was unbelievable. There were just stacks of newspapers left on the corners. No one was there. So I ended up walking to the office and I just obviously, again, didn't know what to do. Um, and obviously they sent everyone home. And at that point we just stayed in our apartments and basically just watched the news like everyone else. And we were in just utter shock. And that was Wednesday. There was no work, obviously, you know, Thursday and Friday. And I decided to, my girlfriend lived in Long Island. So I was going to take the train to Long Island to just get out of the city because who knew if there was another attack, right? Um, another thing I should say is that, you know, the days after 9-11, that following Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, there were bomb scares all over the town, all over the city from the Empire State Building to random office buildings. You just saw people like leaving the building running. Um, and I'll never forget, this was, I think, Saturday or Sunday. Um, I was walking like in the 30s, kind of near the Empire State Building and on Fifth Avenue. And I remember I just see people running up Fifth Avenue. Or actually, yeah, up Fifth Avenue going north. And I was just like, what's going on? And they're like, bomb scare. Empire State. And people in the middle of the street just started running. And this was four or five days after 9-11. So, you know, if you weren't in the city, it's hard to explain the feeling. It was just a sentiment of fear unknown um people were paranoid people were super concerned suspicious mistrustful it was scary time it was the most scared i've been in my life um you didn't know at, at any possible turn if was there going to be a suicide bomb or was there going to be another plane no one knew what was happening was there going to be a bomb um life changed um and i remember going on on the train to long island the first time and i was so scared and i'm a really good traveler i i'm since i've been very young i've been on airplanes and i'm not scared to travel and i was super scared and i i everyone on the train anyone that looked suspicious i would like move chairs and i was scared really it was a really 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 scary time uh, but the one thing and the one thing i really want to focus this podcast on is we all came together not just new york city all americans really everyone in the world came together democrats republicans liberals conservatives everyone we all came together and we were united we supported obviously the victims, the first responders, and we really wanted to stand up for our country, for freedom, for liberty, for what our values are, for what it means to be American. And I remember it was so nice, and you know, I'll never forget you know the first Yankee game when you know the Mayor Giuliani and President Bush and everyone was there and everyone was together and it was like one family. There was uh, we were not divided. We were a unified country and it felt really nice. And even though many, many Americans did not appreciate Bush or didn't appreciate Giuliani, uh, everyone stood and stood together and supported the president and supported the country and the flag. And uh, I remember saying to some people, um, 
this is what America is. And this is why I'm so honored and proud to be American is that in this time of crisis and trouble, we all came together um, because we realized how really, really how quick freedom could be taken away from you. How terrorists, just under 20 terrorists, can literally steal our, our freedom and, and liberty. Um, so it's really something that's so precious. And I, I think we all realize that and how lucky we were to be American and how much it meant to be American. Um, and that kind of stood with me um, th throughout. And obviously, um, you know, that's changed, you know, months and later, you know, we got into Afghanistan and then obviously went into Iraq. And at that point, you know, the country went back to uh, its respective sides. And, you know, it's, it's kind of, we've been crawling along since to this point where there's uh, a really divided country um, from uh, Republicans, Democrats, liberals, conservatives, you have COVID vaccines, anti-vaccine. It, it's, we're not where we should be. Um, looking back at 9-11 and what we went through and how lucky we are to be Americans, how lucky we are to be free, right? If you look at Afghanistan, uh, no matter what you feel about the pullout, I mean, to just see the people in Afghanistan trying to uh, hang on to a, a flying plane just to escape the Taliban, that's scary, right? 20 years, some, some of these people, they were one or two years old when the U.S. got in and, and um, displaced the Taliban. They don't know from anything but freedom. And now we left, the Brits left, the French left, the U.N. nowhere to be found. And now the Taliban control Afghanistan and these people that were in cafes and you know, dancing and listening to music and, and going to college and men, uh, women, girls, boys, um, that's, that's gone, right? In, in one day, their freedom was just taken from them. And that's kind of what 9-11 was for me. It was just a wake-up call to say, oh my God, uh, look what 20 crazy people can do. They can literally um, you know, change our life forever. And I remember you know, the days after, just every time I decided to go somewhere, I was just scared. Um, hey, what's that guy carrying that bag? He looks a little suspicious. Why is that guy wearing a jacket or a heavy sweatshirt? It's kind of warm up. What's under that sweatshirt? Um, I remember I, I worked close to Rockefeller Center. I, I would not go near Rockefeller Center. I, I was just thought, hey, that seems like the most natural place where a crazy suicide bomber can just go uh, um, and do something horrible. Um, so I, I was very cautious and careful where I went in New York. And it took months to kind of get through that. Um, and, and eventually, obviously, you know, you know, we did. But it's just something I will never, ever forget. Um, but I will also remember not just the blue sky, but how the country came together. And I think that's, that's a lesson that we all can, can take from 20 years later is that we need to come back and, and unite against uh, really be American and unite to um, appreciate who we are and appreciate freedom and appreciate the values of being American and what the flag stands for. And yeah, we're not perfect and we, we have issues and problems as I've talked about and we all know about, uh, but we can teach our kids to be better and they can teach their kids to be better. We, we can look at the past and, and get better. And 9-11 was an example of that, where we were hit hard and we were pushed back to the brink, right? We had the Pentagon destroyed, the World Trade Center, almost the White House. They almost, they scared us for a point. They scared us to live, right? They took away our sense of freedom, our, our sense of being American. And that was threatened and under siege. And we fought back um, and we stayed together. and. We valued our freedom and we said, we're not going to let you beat us. We're going to stay strong. And that's something I think we need to remember now is we're American above all, above what party you are, uh, whether you are into vaccines or not, or liberals, conservatives, or like this president or hate this president, it doesn't matter. You love your country, you love the flag, you love what it stands for, and we are in the greatest country in the world. And we have to remember that it's precious. It can be taken from us super quick, okay? 20 crazy people almost stole our freedom, all of our freedom, and scared the heck out of us to live. And that can never happen again. And we have to remember that we need to stay together, stay united, and uh, support each other. Uh, we're not all the same, but as Americans, we hopefully all stand for what it means to be American and what it is to be free and respectful of people. Um, and we were attacked for our freedom. We were attacked because we respect freedom and they were jealous of our freedom. Okay, and that's something that we have to uh, remember forever. So 
9-11 is a day I will never, ever, ever, ever forget. Every time I watch a documentary, um, I just, I can't watch. I, first of all, I turn off any scene where I see the planes going towards the building. I just turn away or, or just turn the TV off because I, I can't look at that. Um, and it, it saddens me the, to have those memories from that day of, of just people crying on the streets, people running, the, the people, the fear in people's eyes. God, I've never seen anything like that. Um, and I'll never forget that. Uh, but I also remember people hugging strangers, um, uniting strangers, helping each other, walking miles together, giving someone a, a sip of water. I saw someone give someone 20 bucks out of uh, ATM. People were waiting in line at ATMs to take money out. Um, someone helped someone uh, to get something to eat. Uh, people, restaurants were opening up, giving people free water, free sodas. Um, it, it was a time of crisis, but also uh, a, a day where we can all be proud and a day we should remember when we come together on 9-11 and remember 20 years later, uh, also remember how we, we fought back and we, we kept our values and we um, persevered and focused on freedom. And that's something I think we can all be proud of and uh, we, we can look at Afghanistan as a lesson to say, hey, it's precious. Um, it can be taken at any moment. And we need to remember how lucky we are to be American. And that's the lesson for me of 9-11. Um, so uh, it's, it's a day, again, that um, uh, lives with me every day of my life. Uh, and, and the blue sky is just that reminder, right? It could be a random day of the year. And when I see that blue sky, the first thing I think about is that morning walking to work. And looking up saying, oh my God, what a beautiful day. I would love to be at the beach today. And, uh, and the, the vision of, of the world trade on fire, uh, I'll never ever forget that vision. But um, also, you know, the smell, right? Uh, a day or so, I lived on 52nd. So they blocked off south of the canal, you couldn't get there. So I live in Tribeca now, you wouldn't be able to get to Tribeca. Canal was blocked off, you couldn't get south. But if you went just to Soho, if people know where Soho is, um, even up to me in Midtown, you could smell the bodies, the death. I'll never forget that. You could smell death in the air, depending on how the wind was blowing. Uh, and that was days after 9-11. Um, the dust was in the air. It, it, it literally was a battle zone. Um, and that took weeks to um, run through. So. Uh, not just the, the uh, mental aspects, but you know, physical, uh, the, the smell, uh, the fear, it was there. And, and it stayed for, for quite some time um, you know, until you know, people felt safe again. Uh, but for me, it took, it took some time. Uh, I, I remember the first flight I took was a couple months after 9-11. I had a business trip. I had to get on a plane. I was scared. And I remember you know, in the waiting area, I was eyeing every passenger. Even when people boarded, I, I would... You know, suspicious to look at people. Hey, who is this person? It's wrong, but uh, I was scared. Okay, and that's what they did to us. These these terrorists. That's what they did. They wanted to steal our freedom, and they almost won, but they didn't. And uh, we could remember 9/11 as a horrific day, but also a day that we came together and fought back for our freedom and said, "You're not winning. We're not scared. We are not going anywhere. And we are going to live as Americans, and we need to remember." to continue to live as Americans, not as Democrats or Republicans or as vaccinators or anti-vaxxers, live as one and respect each other and remember what we got through in the last 20 years and how we can come back together. Okay, and that, that's it. That's, that's all I want to say. Um, it troubles me to see how, how far the country's fallen in the last 20 years. Um, I want I want to see the country go back to where we were all just Americans. Uh, we had differences, but we came together and we we fought for each other, and that's what I'd like to see. Um, and obviously, COVID has changed a lot of things. Politics has changed a lot of things, but we're better than that. We need to go above all that, and we need to remember who we are. So, uh, with that, I I, I hope everyone. Um, as a safe 9-11, number one. Number two, um, you remember the victims um, and the first responders who are, were heroes. They put their lives in danger and they continue to put their lives in danger because many have died because of the asbestos and um, the work they've done post 9-11 to clear all the debris um, ended up causing cancer, 
to many, many first responders. So it's, it's just kind of the, la the lingering effects of 9-11. So we need to remember the heroes. We need to remember the victims, all of them, um, who you know, tragically lost their lives for, for really no reason, just because they were American. So, uh, and then we need to also remember how we could be better and how we need to respect each other and come together as Americans, even if we disagree, respectively disagree, just because someone doesn't believe in what you believe in, you don't have to hate them. You could, don't have to agree, but you can respect their opinion, whether they're vaxxers or non-vaxxers, Dems, Republicans, doesn't matter. We need to respect each other. We all can't agree, but we need to respect each other and have the freedom, not only of expression, but the freedom to live um, in this great country. So that's it. I, I hope um, this was somewhat inspiring um, because we can be better. We are the greatest country in the world and we need to be better. So in that, I, I hope everyone has a great week um, and uh, thanks for listening.